Let's shift to Revelation, the Bible's strangest book. We are currently living in extraordinary, unanticipated, and crucial moments. Millions of Christians across the world are going through difficult times, and only God knows what the future holds for our freedom as Christians. But the stranger and threatening the times become, the more Revelation, this final book of the Scriptures in all its strangeness, will feel as relevant as it is. In the book of Revelation, chapters 12 through 14, the final series of disasters is about to occur. It will be the toughest for the church. Even though their hold on civilization is about to be destroyed, demonic powers will get a more significant foothold in it than they have ever had before. Revelation chapters 12 through 14 introduce three individuals who come together to establish an alliance to rule the world on their own. One is angelic in origin and nature, a great dragon and ancient serpent, otherwise known as Satan or the devil. Revelation chapter 12 verse 9, And the great dragon was thrown down, the age-old serpent who was called the devil and Satan. He who continually deceives and seduces the entire inhabited world. He was thrown down to the earth, and his angels were thrown down with him. The other two are human origin and nature, beasts, also known as Antichrist. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3, he is also referred to as the man of lawlessness, and other passages refer to him as the false prophet. In an appalling parody of God, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit, the three work together to create a kind of unholy trinity. Satan is first introduced into the troubles. Since he was mentioned in the letters that were sent to the seven churches, he has not been referenced in Revelation. The true battle between good and evil is taking place. Later, Satan will again be defeated and thrown into the abyss. Meanwhile, in the few years he has left, his rage and resentment are focused on our planet. Because he cannot engage God in direct conflict in heaven, he wages war on the people of God on earth. It is a defensive maneuver that is being carried out in the hope of sustaining his dominion on earth, utilizing puppet rulers, one of whom is political and the other religious. So far, the message of Revelation chapter 12 is quite clear, even if it taxes the imagination. The strangest chapter in this strangest book is chapter 13. Now let us examine the first 10 verses of Revelation chapter 13, which are pretty unusual indeed. Revelation chapter 13 verses 1 to 10. The beast from the sea and the dragon, Satan, stood on the sandy shore of the sea. Then I saw a vicious beast coming up out of the sea with ten horns and seven heads. And on his horns were ten royal crowns, diadems, and on his heads were blasphemous names. And the beast that I saw resembled a leopard, but his feet were like those of a bear, and his mouth was like that of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power and his throne and great authority. I saw one of his heads which seemed to have a fatal wound, but his fatal wound was healed, and the entire earth followed after the beast in amazement. They fell down and worshipped the dragon, because he gave his authority to the beast. They also worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like as great as the beast, and who is able to wage war against him? And the beast was given a mouth, the power of speech, uttering great things and arrogant and blasphemous words. And he was given freedom and authority to act and to do as he pleased for forty-two months, three and a half years. And he opened his mouth to speak blasphemies, abusive speech, slander against God, to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle, and those who live in heaven. He was also permitted to wage war against the saints, God's people, and to overcome them, 
and authority and power over every tribe and people and language and nation. All the inhabitants of the earth will fall down and worship him. Everyone whose name has not been written since the foundation of the world in the book of life of the Lamb, who has been slain as a willing sacrifice. If anyone has an ear, let him hear. If anyone is destined for captivity, he will go into captivity. If anyone kills with a sword, he must be killed with a sword. Here is the call for the patient endurance and the faithfulness of the saints, which is seen in the response of God's people to difficult times. The first of the beasts is a monstrosity that has ten horns and seven heads, and a dragon grants it power and authority. One of the heads is mortally wounded, but is healed. The beast speaks blasphemies against God and aggressively oppresses the people of God wherever they may be found on earth. It not only rules the world, but receives the worship of its inhabitants. The first beast is a symbolic picture of the Antichrist, and the dragon is Satan. The second beast is a two-horned, deceptively innocent creature that decimates power with the first beast. Then I saw another beast rising up out of the earth. He had two horns like a lamb, and he spoke like a dragon. He exercises all the authority of the first beast in his presence, when the two are together. And he makes the earth and those who inhabit it worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed. He performs great signs, awe-inspiring acts, even making fire fall from the sky to the earth right before people's eyes. And he deceives those who unconverted ones who inhabit the earth into believing him because of the signs which he is given by Satan to perform in the presence of the first beast, telling those who inhabit the earth to make an image to the beast who was wounded fatally by the sword and has come back to life. And he is given power to give breath to the image of the beast so that the image of the beast will even appear to speak and cause those who do not bow down and worship the image of the beast to be put to death. Also, he compels all, the small and the great, and the rich and the poor, and the free men and the slaves to be given a mark on the right hand or on their forehead, signifying allegiance to the beast, and that no one will be able to buy or sell except the one who has the mark, either the name of the beast or the number of his name. Revelation chapter 13 verses 11 to 17. The responsibility of the second beast is to promote the worship of the first beast among all people. As the second beast deceives the world with miracles, it orders that everyone set up an image in honor of the beast who was wounded by the sword and yet lived. Everyone is required to acquire the mark of the beast, either in the right hand or on their forehead. The second beast is a symbolic picture of the false prophet. In Revelation chapter 13, the two beasts make their appearance. 